It's no secret that all dogs, mainly puppies, chew. They chew on furniture, they chew on clothes, they chew on toys, and they even chew on you. And when your dog starts chewing, it'd be very easy for you to just jump right into correcting the behavior. You say no, you punish, or you redirect to a different toy. But if you've been doing those techniques to treat your dog's chewing, and you haven't been able to solve the problem, it's probably because you're not treating the root cause of your dog's chewing. And so in this video, I'm gonna break down the science behind why dogs chew, what they're actually doing, the differences between puppy chewing and adult chewing, and what you can be doing to treat the chewing moving forward. Let's get into it. What's up guys, it's Jenna with Dog Liaison where I coach you on how to enhance your dog's mental health on this channel. We like to look at scientific research to inform us on how to train dogs. So if you like taking a nerdier approach to dog behavior, consider subscribing. When puppies are young and they're with their litter mates, it's common for them to gnaw on each other, bite each other, chew on each other. And you may even see one litter mate correct the other litter mate. What's happening in these early stages is the formation of something called bite inhibition. When bite inhibition is taking place, the puppy is learning how far they can really press down their teeth, how much they can really gnaw on different objects, different individuals. So they may find, for example, that they can chew harder on another puppy's paw versus the other puppy's ear. Or they might find that they can't necessarily really gnaw down on mom, but they can really chomp down on a nylabone. So they're learning how to control their bite, control their chewing on different objects in different contexts. That's called bite inhibition. Bite inhibition is a really important skill that all puppies learn. But for the most part of this video, I don't really wanna be talking about puppies. I think they're an unavoidable factor. We have to confront the fact that puppies chew and puppies bite on things. And that's one of the reasons you may have Googled this video. But I really wanna address why do puppies keep doing it as they mature further into adulthood? The truth is that chewing is an essential need in dog behavior. It is part of their essential enrichment. It is what makes them a dog. And if you try to correct this behavior out wholeheartedly, if you try to prevent your dog from chewing on anything at any time, you will see repercussions. You will see behavioral issues come up. Now, most guardians recognize this. In the scientific literature, there have been surveys. They have asked, you know, the common dog guardian, hey, do you think your dog should need something to chew on? At this point, most people acknowledge that yes, we need to give our dog toys, we need to give our dog, you know, shenanigans to chew on. I don't think this is any groundbreaking information. However, if you are seeing that this chewing is a perpetual problem and that it is causing your dog to chew on things other than toys or if they are chewing on toys it's an obsession it's something that is unhealthy almost now we need to start examining now we really need to address what does the science say about chewing three of the main reasons why a dog may chew include a they're being left alone and they're uncomfortable alone. B, part of their important enrichment routine, such as a walk has been canceled. Or C, there's been a sudden change in their routine. So for example, you've had a visitor over to the house. There's been a significant event, such as you took your dog to the vet. All of these events may lead to seeing your dog chew more. Chew more on toys, chew more on themselves, chew more on you. This has led to a hypothesis that dogs are chewing to relieve stress. Now the reason this came up is because we saw the correlation. We see, okay, we dogs are chewing, which is correlated to these otherwise stress-inducing events. Therefore, they must be chewing to relieve the stress. And in the professional dog training world, it has been greatly hypothesized that we should encourage chewing. And if you are gonna take your dog to a stressful situation or you're going to change the routine because you can't take them for a walk, that means that you should readily provide more opportunities for them to chew. And therefore, one could conclude that chewing is a healthy thing, something to promote. It is a good thing. However, I can't stress enough how this is merely a hypothesis within the professional dog training world. The scientific literature has not necessarily been able to validate this wholly. And in fact, when you look at the scientific literature, the flip side, the flip hypothesis can be equally argued, which is to say that chewing may merely be a symptom of stress, not a means to relieve 
relieve stress. So for example, if you have a headache, you may grab your head, close your eyes, have a deep sigh. These would all be symptoms of having a headache, but no one would necessarily say that you grabbing your head and closing your eyes inherently relieves the headache. It would just be said that that is an indicator that a headache is occurring. So can be true about chewing. You may see that chewing occurs when a dog is stressed, therefore it's an indication of stress. That doesn't necessarily mean that it is relieving stress. Therefore, I think it's important, if I can take my own professional opinion here, I think it's important that we're looking at the individual and we're seeing, is the chewing helping in a healthy way? Is it bringing out a healthier, happier dog or is it just an outlet for exercise? Is it just giving the dog something to do? Because just giving the dog something to do, like fidgeting, doesn't inherently mean that things are being relieved and that it's good. It just means that energy is being expressed. And then of course we have the other extreme, which is to say that chewing can be an indication of a bad thing. So we have a good thing, it's merely a neutral symptom, and then we have an indication that it could be a bad thing. And where this leads is to something called obsessive compulsive disorders. Now, yes, dogs can have OCD behaviors. You might also call hear them called stereotypies. There's a couple of different variations. They all are subtly different, but here's the important part. In animals, obsessive compulsive disorders have been divided into three categories, conflict behaviors, emptiness, and stereotypies. The diagnostic signals of stereotyped behaviors in dog may vary a lot, and some may be more frequent than others, such as self-mutilation and excessive grooming. So we're seeing that chewing, especially chewing on themselves, chewing on you know, a piece of cloth, you may see a dog um, always feel like he needs to chew on this one thing. You may indicate that it can be self-soothing. Perhaps your intuition is that it is self-soothing. I think that that's fine. I think if you're seeing that your dog is lowering his stress levels, he's not as dilated in the eyes, he's not pacing around the house, he's not whimpering, perhaps you're hearing some stress whimpering, you're not seeing these symptoms after he starts chewing and gnawing on something. It can be indicative that this is self-relieving. However, the question remains, why was that stress there in the first place? And why is it so obsessive? Why does your dog feel the need to have to do it? Like a compulsion. This would be more indication of anxiety disorders. Now, I am a professional dog trainer. I work exclusively with dogs facing anxiety disorders. So dogs that have faced reactivity, aggression, separation anxiety, resource guarding, other behaviors as a result of their anxiety. And what I can tell you, is that within the library of dogs that we have worked with at the RP, most of them have had some sort of compulsive stereotypy type behavior. It is a symptom. It is not the problem. It is not a good thing or a bad thing. It's not something to necessarily like label and fix. It's not something to correct. It is a symptom of the actual problem. And the problem is that whatever event your dog is in, whether it's a generalized anxiety disorder, so it's every event, or it's a specific event like going to the vet or having a guest come over, whatever event your dog is in is stress inducing, excessively stress inducing. And it is causing your dog's body to initiate the fight, flight, or freeze response. It is causing your dog to go into panic. And this is the actual problem. The fact that your dog is chewing on something, the fact that your dog has gone to find, you know, a cloth that you don't like, um, or the, the fact that your dog is chewing on you even, perhaps he's nibbling at your fingers. That is not the problem to solve. The root issue, which is potentially an obsessive compulsive disorder, is something that we need to examine. All that said, I don't think we can jump to the conclusion that a dog is inherently anxious simply because they're chewing. I think that it's definitely a symptom of anxiety and I definitely think that it's um, something to look for in your dog. However, to jump to the conclusion that any dog who is chewing or has a compulsion to chew necessarily means that they are anxious and are dealing with a disorder. I don't think we can jump to that conclusion. More likely than not, your dog is experiencing a byproduct of something called the predatory motor pattern. The predatory motor pattern is this really cool sequence of events hardwired into your dog's DNA. And this gives your dog the ability to find food, kill food, 
eat food, and then digest food. The cool thing about the predatory motor pattern is that through artificial selection, we have um, hypertrophied or made stronger certain parts of this predatory motor pattern in certain breeds, which is to say that there are certain breeds that are really strong at parts of the predatory motor pattern and not as good at other parts. It is an unavoidable truth that there are certain breeds, this is just unequivocal, truth. There are certain breeds that have been selected for their ability to put their teeth on things and shake it. There have been certain breeds that have been hardwired through artificial selection to need to put their teeth into things and grind. And so if they don't get that opportunity to express that behavior and express that innate desire, you're going to get behavioral problems. My challenge to you is to examine what breed your dog is or breeds your dog has within you and see if this is an essential enrichment. Be conscientious of the textures that you are giving your dog to chew. For example, something that I see very often is we only give our dog a nylabone, maybe a nylabone and a rope and we say, you know, go to town. Well, if your dog is hardwired to chew on different objects, those two things are not going to be comparable. Those two things are not going to be effective at giving your dog what he needs. Instead, you want to be thinking about if my dog's desire is to chomp on something and, and express that predatory motor pattern, what would he be chewing on if he was out in the wild? What would he be dissecting and consuming and grinding his teeth into if he was out in the wild? that is actually what you want to be giving your dog the opportunity to chew on. More often than not, when I see a dog is having a consistent chewing issue in the home and it's boredom related, it doesn't seem to be a symptom of stress, anxiety, all of the toys under the sun and your dog is still chewing on this one thing. More often than not, it's because you haven't traded your dog something comparable to what they're chewing on. So for example, if your dog is consistently chewing on your couch, it doesn't make sense to give your dog a piece of wood. Why? Because your couch is probably made of something soft and it has a little give. The wood would not have that give. On the other hand, if your dog is chewing on your cabinets, your wood cabinets, and going to town on that, don't be giving your dog a fluffy. Don't be giving your dog a stuffed animal. You probably wouldn't even give most nylabones. If your dog is chewing on your shoes, don't try to give your dog a ball. Those are two things that are not comparable. You want to be thinking about what is my dog asking for? What is my dog telling me he needs to chew on? That is what you need to have readily available. Some people do find that if they let their dog express a behavior like chewing in certain contexts, then that means that the dog will want to chew on certain things in other contexts. And most of the time, dogs can contextualize. Dogs are contextual learners. They figure out conditions. They can say, oh, I get I can chew on this in this situation, but I can't chew on that in that situation. Usually, they can figure it out. And you don't even have to be very intentional about what you're doing. On the other hand, if you have feel like you've been doing it for a while and your dog's not figuring it out, you're like, this lady's crazy, my dog doesn't know how to contextualize, he definitely thinks that if he can chew on A in this situation, then he can chew on B in that situation. If that's you, then I propose to you that you're not causing enough black and white differences between those situations. Perhaps there's more overlap than you realize. And you may be thinking to yourself that these are two very different situations, but when you actually examine it, to your dog, they look exactly identical. For example, it's the same room. You're ha it occurs in the exact same room at the exact same time of day. And you're like, they're different objects. Well, there's a lot of similarities between those two objects. So be identifying what is similar and make sure that you are differentiating them enough so that your dog is able to contextualize. Because the first question I have when I hear that a dog isn't contextualizing something, isn't saying this is true in this situation and this is true in that situation, the first th thing I think of is, why does he think they're the same? What is the same about this in his perspective? So if you can identify what he thinks is similar, make those different, then it starts to become more black and white. More often than not, puppies need more help contextualizing, uh, but adults do better at this. I would just say, the question is always why. The question is always, why does my dog think this? If your dog is telling you something, 
listen to it and merely ask, okay, I guess I need more information from you because I'm not seeing what you see. If you enjoyed this Science Explained video on dog chewing, do me a favor, hit that like button to help it in the YouTube algorithm. If you enjoy a nerdier approach, consider subscribing, hit the notification bell so you get notified when I drop a new video, and I'll see you guys in the next week.